Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this new Wi-Fi 7 router by TP-Link. This is the Archer BE9300 and I'm going to test it with the following Wi-Fi devices. So full on speed test range just like I normally do. Now TP-Link did reach out and sent this to me, but as always, I do all my own speed test range tests. Oh, let's take a quick look at the back. Um, so Wi-Fi 7 obviously, faster, smoother, higher capacity, has home shield which offers some protection. It has easy mesh compatibility, so that means if you get another one of these, you can actually create a mesh network out of them. It does have the VPN option if you guys want to run it through a VPN, and which VPN will require a separate subscription, just as a heads up. And it, it says great compatibility, which pretty much means it works with Wi-Fi 7, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 4. So here is the router itself, a lot of vents, which is nice, keep it nice and cool. We got three buttons in the front, the WPS button, Wi-Fi button, and the LED button right here. We do have the rubber feet. Uh, this part is plastic. This part, I can't tell if it's metal or plastic. Maybe it's super skinny metal. Um, and then we have the ports right here. As you guys could see, we have a 2.5 gigabit right here and another 2.5 gigabit uh, for the internet speed. So if you were coming in, if you had another one of these, you could wire back all it through this guy. Or if you wanted to, again, go in at 2.5, come out at 2.5 so you wouldn't lose uh, your internet speeds up to 2.5 gigabits and then we have three other gigabit ports we have a usb 3.0 a reset um, on and off and the power uh, plug right there so here's everything else that comes inside the box we got a quick installation guide we got the little pin for the factory reset if you wanted to do that some other general info we have an ethernet cable it doesn't tell us if it's cat 5e cat 6 or something else and we have the power adapter right here which is 100 to 240 volts outputs 12 volts at 3.3 amps it's a typical tp link plug and it does match the router itself which is really good so it's been about a week since I've unboxed this thing. I have been using it as my main router and so far so good. So no jobs, I think I'm normal. I have 70 plus devices or so. And it was super easy to set up using the TP-Link Tether app, which we'll get into in a bit. Now in that week or so, I had a chance to do all my speed test range tests, all, all those numbers here. Let's jump straight in with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds, no matter how fast the router is. Unless of course, the router itself can't handle those speeds. So in my case, my internet speeds are five gigabits per second upload and download. And the fastest port on this, as you guys already know, is 2.5 gigabits. So as soon as my internet goes in, it actually caps to 2.5 gigabits. So when I do an internet speed test with an ethernet connected device, I get right around those speeds, like 2.4 or something like that. Now the Wi-Fi devices are a different story. They're typically slower. However, the Wi-Fi 7 device is actually just about as fast as my ethernet connected device as you guys can see i got just over 2.3 gigabits per second upload and download uh wi-fi 6c wasn't quite as fast um, definitely slower than that but not too bad but to truly find out the true performance of this router i do a local speed test server so i make my computer to the server and i go from wi-fi device to router to computer and this way i get rid of my public speed test no <laughs> I get rid of my ISP, my internet service provider, and the public speed test server from the equation. Uh, so therefore, I'm just isolating the router itself. Again, finding out its true performance. So looking at these speeds, uh, there was an improvement in speeds overall. So just under 2.5. I mean, it was a little above 2.4. But I mean, you could tell if the port was faster on this, Wi-Fi 7 would go even faster than that. Because that's actually the limiting factor here. Uh, Wi-Fi 6C was faster than the internet speed test, uh, so pretty good overall. Not quite as fast as Wi-Fi 7, but to be expected. Next, we jump into range tests, and range will vary drastically by location. So if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all essentially more obstructions typically equals less range. So all of that can negatively impact your range. The more of an open area you're in, typically the better um, speeds you will get. So in my case, at 20 feet away, um, solid numbers, hardly a drop for the download, definitely a drop for the upload, but still doing very, very well. At 50 feet, this is when I'm out, actually outside my place, and the download speed is just doing phenomenal. I, I, was, I was honestly pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting it to do this well. Obviously, the upload took a huge hit, especially for Wi-Fi 7, but still going really, really strong. And at 100 feet, this surprised me even more that with Wi-Fi 7, I actually got over gigabit speeds, which is 
insane. I, I mean, again, the upload speed is suffering quite a bit. Still getting some solid, solid numbers. But the download was, I was like, this is, this is absurdly fast. I was not expecting it to be this good. Uh, and it can actually go faster, far, further than 100 feet. Uh, but I just capped my test to 100 feet. All right, so next we get into the Tether app. This is what you use to set up and configure. And it's very simple. It tells you what to connect where to, to pretty much get that basic setup going. And um, it's super solid, very nice app, very similar to their Deco app, which they use for their Deco mesh systems. So very clean interface it shows you the devices that are connected. I mean, this is a single router, so all the, your devices are going to connect to this one right here. Uh, and in addition to that, um, you know, you get some basic... Home Shield, which uh, scans your network and stuff. You get some basic parental controls, and you know you could filter out some stuff. You could set bedtimes and things like that. You could pause devices, and then they have more advanced parental controls, which does require a separate subscription. So keep that in mind if you want more advanced parental controls. Uh, and then as far as the Wi-Fi settings, you could customize the SSIDs. Um, you get a separate six gigahertz band, separate MLO band if you want to do that. Um, you can even separate out the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. You can combine them into one or even separate those two out. Um, so really a lot of options. You can make a guest network. You can make a IoT network. Um, you could set up VPN to go through this thing. So everything is encrypted through the VPN because the router itself is going through the VPN. So really a lot of customization um, available in the Tether app. Very clean, works well. Now, is it worth getting this thing? Why or why not? Well, as always, it depends on your specific situation. I would say this is a very good router overall for anyone with internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. And it, it supports Wi-Fi 7. It got some really good speeds. And it, in fact, what actually impressed me, impressed me, <laughs> impressed me the most was its range test. It was genuinely a very good um, range overall for the download speeds uploads was okay, but the download was really really good I was I was not expecting it to do that. Well, especially for the price. I mean the, this thing offers a lot uh, For its price, especially the fact that it supports Wi-Fi 7 as well So with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below and as always Smash that subscribe button and I should mention that I will be comparing this to the other archers a few other archers I'm currently testing the archer be 800 and I've already tested the be 900 So I will at least do a Wi-Fi 7 comparison between the archers But I might throw in a Wi-Fi 6C and maybe even a Wi-Fi 6 archer But let me know what you guys think what, what kind of comparison are you looking for should I mix the Wi-Fi 7s with the Wi-Fi 6s and 6s or should I just do a Wi-Fi 7 only? Um, comparison but yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.